Hello, my name is Jason Fay. I'm the Director of Training here at the Arcticom Group and welcome to our video training series. Okay, so let's talk about some of the tools we're going to need to do a proper recovery. So we're going to need a recovery machine, we're going to need a recovery tank, we're going to need a scale, an extra charging hose, and a manifold setup. And please don't forget, always get yourself an O32 dryer on the inlet to protect your machine. Okay, so this is our recovery tank. They come in many capacities, but the most common for small system is either the 50 pound recovery or the 30 pound recovery tank. <clears throat> so the maximum the Department of Transportation will allow you to fill these tanks is 80% of its rated capacity. So how do we know what the capacity is? <clears throat> so if we look on the side here, we're gonna get a TW. So this tells us the tear weight of this tank. Tear weight means just the weight of the tank. Empty, nothing else inside of it. And if we look down here for our WC, this is going to be our water capacity, aka how many pounds of refrigerant we can put in this in this tank. And this one here is 26.2. So we're able to put in 20 80% of 26.2 pounds into this tank. One last number on this tank is these tanks come rated for either 350 pounds or over 400 pounds. So if you're using 410A refrigerant, you have to make sure your model number has a 400 in it. Okay, so now that we went ahead and figured out all the properties of our recovery tank, we're gonna go ahead and pull a vacuum on this tank. Now, one of the best things you can do to speed up your recovery process, if the tank is empty when you start, you pull the vacuum and we'll go ahead and put it in the freezer. So how do we hook it up? So we've got our manifold set, I'm hooking up our blue hose into the blue vapor port of my recovery tank. Then I've got my yellow vacuum hose attached to my vacuum pump. I've opened up my gas ballast and I've opened up the vapor port on my recovery tank. <clears throat> we'll open up suction valve and our vacuum. Now we're ready to turn on the vacuum pump. Again, remember, gas ballast is open. So I like to leave gas ballast open for about a good 30 seconds. That way if we have any moisture sitting in here, we can kind of blow it out of the machine instead of putting it into the oil. So on our gauges here, we can see now that we are getting close to a 30 inches of vacuum. I'm going to go ahead and close up my gas ballast and pull a nice big vacuum on this tank. Okay, so I've come down, we finished the vacuum. If you notice, we're just almost to our 30 inches of mercury, which is telling us we've got our full vacuum and the tank is ready to be placed in the freezer. Okay, so we're ready to start our recovery. I pulled my recovery tank out of the freezer. I placed it on my scale and I went ahead and zeroed it out. So we want to know uh, zeroed out so we know exactly how much refrigerant we are pulling out of the system. So I've already connected my gauges. So as you can see, I've got my discharge line running over to my liquid port on my receiver. I've got my suction gauge running over to the suction service valve on my compressor. And then I went ahead and got my 3 8 vacuum hose running underneath this table, up in, through our O32 dryer, out of our recovery pump, back into my recovery tank. So that's the connections for the hoses. Uh, next, we're gonna go ahead and get it fired up. Okay, so now for, we gotta go ahead and open the system. So our suction service valve, I've placed my service wrench on, and I'm going to mid-seat the service valve. I'm going to do the same thing on my liquid valve off my receiver. Again, mid-seated, about halfway in. Next, we want to open up our suction, and I've left my hose slightly loose on my tank. 
So what we're gonna do is just push all the refrigerant through and just get rid of the air. Oops. Gotta make sure we have our valves open. Okay, everything is bled out, everything's connected. Next thing we're gonna do is open up our recovery tank and turn on our machine and start the, pro start the recovery. Okay, so everything's connected. I've made sure and opened up all the ports on my manifold to 100%. I've verified everything is tight. All my ports are open. And we're gonna start the recovery process. Okay, so now we've got the pressures equalized in the tanks. So now we're going to go ahead and bring on our recovery pump and start putting in the tank. Okay, so we finished up our recovery. I've turned off the machine. I've closed up all my uh, ports on my manifold. And as you can see, we pulled about 4.15 pounds of 4OA out of the system. System was marked as four pounds. Okay, so I went ahead and made my repair. Uh, remember, you always want to change your filter dryer every time you open up the system for service. And now we're going to go ahead, take that refrigerant out of our recovery tank, and put it back into our system. So what you want to make sure you start with is you want to push all your liquid through your dip tube. It's at the bottom. Push our liquid up and we'll try to fill up our receiver. What we're trying to avoid is any liquid into our compressor. So now I'm gonna open up my liquid valve and try to get as much of this refrigerant that's stored up in this tank into my system. We'll wait for the uh, rushing to stop and then we'll switch over and finish charging it through the suction side of the compressor. Okay, so all of our gas has pushed into our receiver. So now the next step would be just charge as normal, bleed, uh, charging through the suction on the compressor. Okay, so that's it for our uh, reclaim video. What I like to do is just do a little recap. Uh, and these are all the tools that we had available to us. We are not getting paid, we're not endorsing. These are tools that we use. So just want to know you may not have this same exact recovery machine on your tank, on your van. So please make sure you read your books and you understand all your features before you get started. So we have a recovery machine, we've got a vacuum pump, generally a 3 CFM is all you're going to need. You don't need to move up to the 7, 10s, 3 to 5 and you're going to be just fine. Adjustable wrench, service wrench, digital scale, 30 pound recovery tank, and a manifold set. So these are all the tools you need to properly recover refrigerant out of self-contained. And again, my name is Jason Fay, the Director of Training, and I'm here with the Arcticom video series.